doing well. I'm very excited to film today's video because I'm going to be going through all of my favorite books that I read throughout this year. And I apologize because there's going to be a dog butt apparently in the background of this video, but I just feel too bad to move him. I can't do it. So I'm going to go through my top five favorite books that I've read so far this year. But first, let's start off with a couple of honorable mentions. As a complete side note, I feel very like Tumblr because I'm wearing like a galaxy dress, but I ran out of clean clothes. I used to wear this a lot when I was like 19 and it's all I had. So, so for honorable mentions, first is In Order to Live. I'm sure many of you have heard of this. It's the nonfiction account of a young woman escaping from North Korea. I highly, highly recommend checking this out. Then we have The Opposite of Loneliness. This is a collection of nonfiction and fiction sort stories written by a woman who unfortunately passed away right after she graduated from Yale. The reason this isn't in my top five is just because I enjoyed the nonfiction a lot more than I did the fiction, but I still highly recommend it. And finally, we have a very controversial book, not because the subject matter was really controversial, but just because a lot of people hated this book, and that is Eileen. Now, what I would say is if you get 20 pages into this book and you hate it, put it down. And I know a lot of booktubers don't recommend just putting down books and they'd recommend finishing it, but I really think that because this is a character study of this woman named Eileen, who she's very kind of gross and has gross habits, she's an alcoholic. I feel like a, sorry, I felt like a spider was on my back, but I guess it's my hair. I know a lot of people who read this book and just absolutely despised it and just weren't interested in Eileen. There's not a lot that happens plot wise, so I think just just depending on how your brain works and what you're just naturally inclined to be interested in, you're either going to be interested in Eileen or you're not. So just know that going into it. Okay, so we're going to start off with my top five, and I did rank these in order. So at number five, I definitely was not expecting to like this one as much as I did, but that is Wild by Cheryl Strayed. If this was hugely popular, the movie and the book. The movie is also excellent. I actually liked the movie just as much as the book, which is rare, so definitely look into the movie as well. But, but this is about a woman who has a number of very difficult hardships and then an attempt to get over them and kind of clear her head. That's a very simplistic way of putting it. She decides to hike the Pacific Crest Trail, so this is nonfiction, and I just thought her writing writing style was so, so, so beautiful. So I highly recommend this one. Then we have Homegoing, which I just reviewed this less than a week ago and posted my video. So I'll have that linked above. This is all fiction and it's a collection of short stories. But what makes these short stories interesting, what makes the structure of this book very complex and fascinating is the fact that it starts off with two half sisters born in Ghana who never meet. And then it follows their offspring seven generations throughout 300 or 400 years. And it's a quick read. It's only 300 pages. And somehow the book manages to have such an impact with every single character. So just please go ahead and check this one out. Then we have The Interestings, and this is another one like Wild, where I definitely was not expecting to like this one as much as I did. It follows five friends who meet in the late 1960s, I think it was, at an arts camp. A lot of them are quite wealthy, living in New York City. One of the girls is more middle class, and, and it follows them throughout the rest of their lives. Now, not a ton happens plot-wise in this book. There are a couple key events, but not really overall. It really is just a character study of all of these different people. So I I know some people love this book. Some people think it's incredibly dull and think nothing happens, but I'm definitely in the group of the former. I just absolutely adored her writing style and just the author's take on just everyday life events. Sobbing by the end of the book, I'll also say. This is another one where like Eileen, I think if you get like 50 pages into it and you're not absolutely enthralled with her writing style and interested in the characters, I don't know if I would say continue on with it, honestly, just, be just, just because it is quite a lengthy book. And if you don't like the first 50 or 100 pages, I don't know if you're necessarily going to like the rest. And, and at number Number two is my favorite psychological thriller of the year. So, so if you're subscribed to my channel for psychological thriller recommendations, please check this one out. And that is The Devil and Nan King. This, this also wins my award for favorite book cover of the year, even though this was written quite a few years ago. But it's also spawned a trend with my friends where they where they started to hide print out of masks. Now I know I've talked about one before and I'll insert an image of that here, but my friend just did it again. But one of my other friends just did this because she knew about the other one. She sent me a package in the mail and it had like a cracked baby doll face. And so I ripped it off excited my mom was standing there and she screamed. Anyway, I have a spoiler free review of this as well, which of course I'll link above, but this is about a girl from England, or I should say a young woman who travels to Japan to find this man so that she can solve this mystery of something of a key event that happened back during the rape of Nanking. So, so just based off of what I said there, I think you can tell this is going to be a very dark book. It is quite violent. So I would say if you get uneasy quite easily, definitely do not read this book. And it shifts back in time between the point of view of the Chinese man 
during the rape of Nanking and this English girl when she's trying to live and figure out this mystery while she's in present day Japan. So this book it definitely took me by surprise. I never heard it before and thankfully a lot of you guys have since said since I posted my review that you've read it and loved it as well. So please go ahead and check that out. And finally my number one favorite book of the year. This was kind of a sleeper hit. A lot of people don't unfortunately know of this author although he has just a plethora of wonderful horror novels. I should say apparently he does because I've only read this one so far but that is The Elementals. Before I forget the audiobook which is narrated by who is it R.C. Bray or R.C. Barry not sure. I have, I have R.C. Barry written down but I think it's R.C. Bray not positive. The audiobook is just wonderful. I love his voice so I highly recommend the audiobook but unfortunately the author of this book passed away when he was in his 40s and Stephen King has said he thinks he's one of the greatest paperback horror novel novelists and unfortunately he never really became incredibly popular but this book takes place in the deep south when kind of the matriarch of a very old family dies so kind of both families travel down to stay at these three identical kind of Victorian homes right on the shore right on the Gulf in Alabama and one of the houses is haunted and it's and, and it really is just a throwback classic horror novel this one isn't one where I would say this isn't like the devil and Nan king where it's horribly violent or anything like that this is one where I would say if you like classic horror and you want to read kind of an underrated horror novelist definitely check that one out so I hope you guys enjoyed my top five favorite books of the year also let me know if you'd like me to do I don't know what I would call it but as you guys know I didn't read a single young adult book this year that's one thing I did intentionally so if you want me to talk about that in kind of a wrap-up video I can and I'll also of course discuss my reading goals for 2017 so I hope you guys enjoyed this video please let me know of course if you've read any of these books or what your favorite book of 2016 was and I will see you guys soon bye